Hi guys, we're in my studio again this week, a bit brighter than normal, the front door's wide open. <laughs> we're going to be DIYing a table. Uh, now it was a roadside find for me, found it outside someone's house, had a label on it that said free, looked like a pretty decent table so I brought it home. Uh, the trouble was though, it is covered in sort of like a duck egg blue paint and then I think might actually be silver spray paint over the top of it. I'm not going to lie to you, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is sand off all of that paint. Hopefully I'll be able to do that all today. And then I'm going to leave most of it as raw wood. But I've got a poster that I'm going to decoupage over the top of it. It's a poster of the Sussex shipwrecks. So it's kind of themed on my local area and hopefully it's going to look really good when it's finished. So I'm going to get on with that. Now I've got a random orbit sander to do this with. I did start doing it by hand a really long time ago, but that silver spray paint over the top is really kind of, it's got a really weird texture. It's kind of plasticky almost, so it completely jams up the sandpaper and then I can't get anything off of it. So I had to get a sander to do this one. The aforementioned table. You can see I managed to get some of it off by hand. But yeah, it wasn't an easy job. I mean, the silver does peel a little bit, but not enough for me to be able to take the whole lot off. I mean, look at it. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Let's get that off, shall we? Now, if you are going to give this a go, any way you do it, you should always be wearing PPE. So, something to protect your eyes, something to protect you from the dust, and some gloves. Ideally, heavier duty gloves than those plastic ones that I've got. I don't have any heavy duty gloves, so I'm just going to stay really alert of my surroundings so that I don't hurt myself. Just be, you know, conscious of the health and safety of this sort of thing. My sander does come with its own dust extraction bag, which does need regular emptying. However, I'll still be wearing a mask because some paints and some woods can be toxic if ingested or breathed in. So you've got to protect yourselves when you're working. And even though I wear glasses, I still have to wear goggles over the top of those because the glasses aren't enough to protect your eyes from the dust in the atmosphere. So if you can, do it in a room with good extraction, so like an extraction fan or a good airflow through or outside if you can. My power cord doesn't stretch quite far enough to be just outside the garage, so I'm as close to the door as I possibly can be. And I'm just going to be aware of the dust levels in the atmosphere. So let's get on. Looking much better, don't you think? It's just the top that's done. No idea how well the legs are going to go, but that was done so much quicker than I could have done by hand. So it is doing the underside relatively well, actually. The legs are coming off way easier than the top was. I think all these fine details are going to have to be done by hand. These aren't really the right kind of size for doing with a random orbit sander. So if you are going to do this like I am, please be extremely careful of sanding tiny surfaces like this. There we go. So to the best of my sander's ability, I've done all of the wood except for tiny details like that, which I will have to do by hand. And I didn't do the underside here either, just because you can't see it when you look from the top anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it. But yeah, this is a several day job. I have a lot of hoovering to do now, so I'm going to do that, and I shall carry on with this at some other point. It's a new day, fresh start. Going to deal with the minor details on the sanding of the table. Um, so I've got a fresh lot of PPE, new dust mask, the last one contaminated, clogged, throw it away. If you're doing this, get a fresh mask out. Uh, a couple of files. Not an ideal tool, but probably going to help me get into one of the tiny little looks and crannies a little bit better than with just the sandpaper. And the big purple file is just chock block with all different types of sandpaper. So I'm just going to get on with that. I've actually gone for this tiny round file. It seems to be working much better than the sandpaper in all these little grooves here. So I think I'm probably going to do as much as I can with files because that's working quite well. But I'm still going to have to go over the whole thing with a finer grit of sandpaper just to get it all smooth. So hopefully you can see just there all the little paint bits that I've got out of the detailed areas. 
I've done this on three sides except for these under bits here because you won't see them when it's finished uh, and that's about as far as I'm going to go for today some little bits like that other bits I've got left to do and I'm going to finish that up tomorrow and then hopefully we can stick the top on it's a new dawn it's a new day and here I am still sanding wood should get it done today just got the fine details to do on one side of the table then i can sand it smooth and with some really really fine sandpaper and then i can show you the poster that's going to go on top oh that took forever <laughs> in total probably about seven hours of just hand chipping away all the detail bits of paint and my goggles keep steaming up duh right well at least i can carry on now. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is with a piece of wet and dry paper, quite a fine grit, I'm just going to sand off everything, make sure it's nice and smooth so I'm not going to get any splinters off of it at any point. Can't wait to get this stuff off my face. <laughs> Go for that. Got all the stuff off. I can breathe. <laughs> I've got it as smooth as I think I possibly can. You can see I've left some of the varnish on there. It's quite difficult to get that off. I'm not too worried about that though because I quite like the effect that that has. Some of it is going to show up around the edges of the poster because the poster isn't the same size as the top of the table. I just think it would give it a nice sort of weather beaten look without it being not wood looking if you get what i mean i think you get what i mean <laughs> to get all the dust off of it now in a relatively safe way i'm gonna get a bucket and a sponge just douse it down with a little bit of cold water sponge as much of the dust off as i can dunk it in the bucket and then just need to wait for it to dry after that there's a lot of stages to this <laughs> but it's re it's getting there we're, we're in the home stretch i think <laughs> And now we wait for it to dry. You clean up nice table. Good job. So the table's finally dry and this is the poster that's going to go on the top. So you can see it's not quite big enough to cover the whole table but that's fine. I have trimmed a little bit off the edges of the poster because it came with a load of copyrights and things around the side that weren't massively decorative. A relic from my days at the caves. <laughs> And for this next bit, we're going to have to work quick. You need a brush because you need to PVA glue both the top of the wood and the back of the poster with enough time for it to not be dry before you stick it down. And then I've got both a ruler and a boning tool because I'm going to use these to try and smooth out as many air bubbles as possible once this goes down wet. But yeah, this is going to be interesting. Don't know if it's going to work. We'll see.
And there we go. Quite impressed actually. I think I managed to get it level without really trying. Well obviously I was trying but I didn't mark it out or anything. Got a few air bubbles but it's fine. It's my table, I'll live with that. <laughs> also I think I used a bit too much PVA glue but at least PVA will dry flat. From experience I can tell you it dries completely flat. There may be a, one or two air bubbles in there but again totally fine. Uh, what I will probably do when it's dry is just deal with these ends, sand a little bit of the glue away and then I think I'm going to varnish over the whole table with some form of clear wood varnish. I'm going to go clear because I don't really like that sort of tiki colour and if I use a mahogany or something it will cover up the poster. So just a nice clear glue, protect the wood and then it will be done pretty much. So when the glue is dry I'll take some photos to share with you so you can see it. Um, but yeah, don't throw your furniture away. Get some glue out, get looking through magazines, you can do this with napkins, I've seen people do it with pretty napkins, po old posters like I've done here. You could even do it with fabric and if you're that advanced you could even cover what you do on the top with a pane of glass. Really fancy. <laughs> That's another example in fact I've got, um, I haven't done it yet, it's a bulky one, it would be a big job but I really want to do this to my wardrobe. Um, my wardrobe is just a plain wood but whatever it was treated with um, before I bought it, it is going that kind of yellowy teak colour, which doesn't look great. Oh, it's alright, but it's not great. <laughs> so what I want to do to that is sand the whole thing down and um, decoupage the inner doors with these beautiful botanical images of birds from um, a book that I've got upstairs actually. I think that will work really, really well. So yeah, you, you get inspiration from anywhere, just, you know, get out the scissors, get out the glue. Get out the glue, yeah. Chemical peel, anyone? <laughs> and yeah, making. I'm very pleased. It's been very hard work. I hate sanding, as I have now found out. <laughs> but I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. Um, thanks for watching then, guys, and see you next week.